Welcome back to Project Profit. This is a series where I take used items and try to flip them for a profit. Any profits that I do make will be donated to nonprofit organizations throughout the series. In the previous episode, I restored this broken mirrored coffee table that I found for free. And when it sold, it brought our new grand total profits so far to $446.81. Also in the previous episode, I found these vintage chairs for $6 a piece, of which I completely refurbished and found very, very similar, if not the same, reselling online. Also, just looking at the image alone due to its wear and the shape, I could tell that they were possibly vintage because what I did was take a screenshot of the chair and reverse image searched. I mean, there's some differences, but pretty much identical and $6,600. So I wanna try selling these chairs in a different way than I normally might, AKA Facebook Marketplace, to hopefully get them in front of the right audience because they actually might be worth some value here. So with that being said, I have since reached out to a local vintage seller. His name is Rob. He's also known as Mr. Vintage Toronto on Instagram to come assess the chairs, help us find a price, and maybe he'll help us sell them? I don't know. I haven't asked yet, but... Also, when I did send him pictures of the chairs that I had with no other context from the internet, he immediately responded, Italian. I feel like we're in really good hands here, and he's actually on his way right now. Hello. Oh my gosh. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in. So you've been selling vintage curated goods. Can you tell me how long you've been doing that for? Um, I've been doing it for about two years and I uh, find quality uh, vintage goods, refinish them up and find them new homes. You've seen these, are. we've sent you photos, but now that we're in person, what do you think? What do we got here? I, I, I love them. The quality of the chair, uh, the leather on these is, is absolutely spectacular. The hardware on these, uh, looked at the legs and the wood, you picked up two gems. Did you know we got them for $6 a piece? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yes. Uh, fantastic. Yes. Fantastic score. The underside of the chair on all, the, on all chairs really tells a story. Okay. I could tell by the hardware they're a little bit more modern they uh and uh and it's quality there is no damage on any of the screws and fasteners another detail that tells me that this is a quality chair is its uh welding so this style right here is an italian style mm -hmm. uh the leather and the bonding uh is quite typical uh for that what we've seen in the early 70s up to the 80s what do you think we could price these for? I, I like to work in ranges. I will say that for this particular pair uh, and this quality, you're looking for a range uh, between uh, three to five hundred dollars. Not three to five hundred dollars? <laughs> My next question for you is, and I don't know how you're going to feel about this, but do you think that you could help us sell these chairs? The money is being donated to charity. I absolutely love that and it would be my honor. To, to help and I will definitely post them on uh, Mr. Vintage Toronto. Thank you so much. That is really great news. I guess, tell me, do you want to take the chairs with you? How are we going to style these? How are we going to get them on the Instagram page? You have a wonderful studio here. I, I think, uh, you, you know, you help me help you. Uh, let's, uh, let, let, let's take some shots here. I'll grab one chair, you grab the other? Let's do it. Okay. Guide the way. Okay, so Rob has left. He has his Instagram photos. Again, his handle is Mr. Vintage Toronto, and definitely check him out because I got to talk to him more off camera, and he is genuinely one of the sweetest people I have had the pleasure of meeting. So definitely go show him some love. And in the meantime, sorry, there was a beat. Um, in the meantime, please go away. Listen, we can coexist. Just don't land on me. That's all. That's all I ask. I can. I don't care if you're here. Just don't land on me. <laughs> what was I saying? In the meantime, while we wait for these chairs to sell, I have another vintage piece I wanna show you guys that also could use a little bit of love. But in order to show you, I need to take you back a few weeks when I was working on my last project. At the office, I'll get us a new metal ruler if I damage this one.
Okay, so you may remember our landlord, Sheldon. Wow. Someone's not gonna wanna leave the bathroom. He appeared at the end of a recent video where Becky and Rochelle made over one of our office bathrooms with no money. Well, he popped by to gift me a vintage piece for free that he picked up while helping his friend empty out his late mother's home. How sweet is this? Sheldon told me this piece is from the Art Deco era and it is so beautifully crafted. It has great storage and inside the cupboard here, it's mirrored, which tells me it could have been a bar station at one point. It also has this really cool planter bucket on the side, which apparently was very trendy at the time. As of now, the paint is worn and faded. There are some minor dents in the wood and the planter bucket is clearly rusted. Other than that though, this thing is in incredible condition and I don't plan to change much, but I really just want to restore this piece. And I'm actually so curious what's under all this paint. But before I get to removing it, I think it's a good idea to do a lead test. She passed. I only have half a bottle of this paint stripper left over from when Kelsey took the paint off the vintage drawers in our boardroom this summer, and I am hoping it will be enough. This stuff only really works when it is wet, and I'm gonna let it sit on the surface for at least 30 minutes. So that is also why you see me coating it in the plastic here, to give it time while it works away at the bond. Even when this stuff gets a little tacky, it still doesn't scrape away so easily, so I did re-wet some areas and just worked away at the existing paint with my scraper. Now I am only about 40% of the way through this and I know that the inside's going to be a bit more challenging than the outside was, so maybe I'm only like 30% of the way there. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, it is a new day and I am very happy with the progress that was made yesterday. I think I got like 99% of the paint off. But before I left, I just neutralized all of it with some vinegar and water. It gave it a really good wipe clean and take a look. I can't believe this thing was once painted, guys. There is this beautiful dark trim around the front edge and look at how beautiful the two-tone wood is with the black lacquer. I love this. Today, I wanna to just give this whole thing a really good sand, and by the end of today, I will be able to go in with some stain. Okay, I'm all finished with the sanding and this thing is looking amazing. Before I can move on with the stain though, I don't know if you guys remember the small gouge that's in the side of this thing. Now, I don't wanna fill it with a pre-made wood filler because they don't tend to stain the same color that you want it to be and we have a dark trim around the edge here. So I'm gonna actually try making my own wood filler. And I've already gone ahead and collected some of the dust from the trim as well as the handle. So I'm going to take the dust, mix it with some wood glue and then we can fill in that space. We're just going for a paste, like consistency, similar to the pre-mix stuff. Not bad. Now I've already put some pre-made wood filler just to try and fill up the space as much as possible. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna get, but now this is dry, I'm just gonna sand away this. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. <laughs> I honestly haven't done this before and I don't know why. 
because I should always be doing this. While I wait for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and test some wood stains on the underside of the shelf. Hmm, I don't like that either. This one's a bit more red, a bit meridia. Okay, I took out all of our most lightest shades because I don't wanna change the color too much. I just kinda wanna compliment it. I'm finding these ones down here a bit too orange. So I'm thinking we'll go with this guy. It's called natural, <laughs> just natural, natural 209. First, I'm going in with some wood conditioner, let that sit for about 30 minutes, and then go in with our stain. Okay, a couple updates for this morning. After giving the stain some time to dry and set, I came in yesterday to give this whole thing a proper seal and it is looking so good. I can't wait to show you guys, but you're gonna have to stay to the end for the reveal. Now, my goal for today is dealing with the rusty bucket. So apparently this thing was a planter, which was very trendy for its time, and I'm hoping I can restore it. It does have a lot of corrosion. So also yesterday, I scraped away any of those loose pieces and then filled the whole container with traditional vinegar so that it could just soak and start eating away at the rust. So far, it's been sitting for at least 24 hours and look how nasty the liquid's gotten so far. Okay, so I'm gonna dump out this liquid and see how easy or not easy it's gonna be to scrape off this rust. Guys, look, one of my best friends for my birthday just gave me this adorable necklace. And I really wish I could tell you who made it, but it was from a guy who blows glass and he had a little tiny stand at a market, so. Definitely coming up. I honestly wish I maybe started soaking it even sooner, but here we are. Look how gross. So nice. <laughs> I feel like people will not want to see that. But look. To see the original metal. Okay, so I've been scraping for a while, but now I'm gonna switch it up to some steel bristle brushes. Got two here, and this one. I hope this just gives me the extra elbow grease I need right now. Let's go. Oh yeah, just the juice I needed. Making some good progress. I feel like that's almost gonna go. Okay, check this out. I am like so close. I'm just gonna grab some more vinegar. I'm just gonna show you guys. No! It's all coming off. Okay, after a couple hours of scraping, I've got rid of most of the rust. I think I'm starting to see actually the old paint come through underneath. So now it's time to add some fresh paint. And luckily for me, I have some leftover metal paint from my bathroom makeover that I did recently. So first, I'm just hitting the whole thing with some metal primer. Oh, oh, oh. And next, going in with a black metal paint. These paints will also help the bucket from reacting with the air and prevents further corrosion. All that's left to do is put this thing back together and take a look. I am so happy with how this piece has been restored. Like, come on, Credenza. At first, I wasn't sure if I was doing this piece a disservice by not refreshing the yellow paint, but this is definitely how it was meant to be. And she is gorgeous.
Okay, updates for you guys. As we already know, Rob, or Mr. Vintage Toronto, was helping us to sell the Italian chairs, and he ended up getting $300 for the pair, which is pretty awesome, considering I only had to spend like under $40 in materials to restore them, so that's a big win. And as for the credenza, Rob may have also helped us to sell that, and he actually ended up teasing it on the stories on the Instagram page, and it ended up selling from the story alone, which also sold for $300, and because I already had everything we needed in the storage room to restore this piece, this is all straight profits to our goal, which I am also very excited to announce to you guys that we have already hit our first goal of $1,000. Yay! I uh, want to say thank you so much to Rob for helping us reach this goal and you know this is only episode three of Project Profit so I definitely didn't think we'd hit it this early and I'm really excited to see where this series goes. We are actually at $1,012.82 so if you haven't left your comments on which charitable causes or nonprofit organizations you think that this should go to please let us know down below and in the next episode I'm going to update you guys on this donation. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you are enjoying this series so far and if you haven't seen the previous episode of Project Profit when I found the chairs originally definitely go check that out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! At the price of free, I felt like it had project profit potential. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous. I'm sure once I get started, it'll be better. <laughs>